I guess I have another question. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any tips for proportion, like how you go about nailing it or? Proportions is a tricky thing, right? Because the figure is also moving in space. So proportions are also changing, right? If something that is closer to us, closer to the camera, gets foreshortened, gets bigger, and if something goes away, like it's getting smaller. This makes things tricky. So these human scales we see from Loomis and the average person is like seven to eight heads high, etc., etc. These can theoretically work, but every human being is different. Also, that's why it's so tricky to draw the human figure or the human form in general. And this is the power of the gesture because it's simple, it is quick, and it gives us structure. And all we need to do is basically drawing complex 3D form over the gesture. What is also important that we think about these overlaps happening. So the leg, for example, is turned in a certain way. We see more of the kneecap. So there is a very particular overlap happening. And we as artists, when we practice these, we need to observe these overlaps because they make the drawing less flat. The problem with flat drawings um, is, again, and it's a great example, if we have the cube in the front view on a table, we only see one plane. When we turn it on a table, we stay in that view, we're going to see two planes. And then if we turn the camera completely, we have three planes. And what we always want to achieve in our drawing is three planes. We want to see three planes to give the 3D look, 3D effect. So this can happen, and this ha happens very often actually, because maybe the third plane is hidden. What we don't want is this. We don't want one plane because then our drawing is flat. Figuring out, and sometimes you can also draw through the form to figure out where is the leg actually coming from, where is the origin of the leg. And there's actually a twist happening. You drew here a cylinder, which is not false, but we need to make sure that we keep this twist and show it to the viewer. So the viewer understands what is happening to the lower leg. There's actually a twist and that we see more of the back of the foot and the calf. Here, when we use the flow of the gesture, we can stop at the collarbone. The collarbone is a great landmark, is a great indicator. From the collarbone on, we start to follow the flow and make sure that actually, make sure that the angle of the head and the distance from here to here matches. So gesture is a great way of simplifying form first before we commit to the form. If you can simplify things to your own understanding, you're able to draw them in your way. And this will also help you to get your own style out. If you have trouble to put a face on the head, just look out for this triangle here. Because this will help you to identify where you can put the mouth, where you can put the ears, where you can put the nose. Do you think with hands, it's just the same as everything else? Just you try to simplify it and then... I would suggest if you do hands or if you have trouble with hands, approach it the same way as you approach the whole figure. Go for the gesture first, because when we simplify hands, we often see that the fingers are grouped in a certain way. Like all the fingers are grouped, right? And when the, the fingers are relaxed, they usually, in the most ways, not equally spread if you observe someone walking because there's always some sort of gesture so there's always some sort of group grouping happening or when someone is pointing something just try to observe how is or what is happening to the fingers how is the grouping of the fingers simplify them with lines again as we do with the gesture give it a straight line here a curved line here a straight line here and then just try to figure out how is actually a gesture of it i would draw 50 gesture hands just by observing and then doing the construction over it, it's super simple because it's basically a box and five cylinders. So in any ways you practice gesture, things become more natural. If you have a character who's angry, you know, like he balls fists. Uh, if you have a character who's a, like a magician or someone who's reading or someone who's like tearing his face apart or like being this doom person, you know, like oh, 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 making this, this evil hands, for example. Hands can be so expressive. So that's why it's really important to not underestimate hands in your drawing and in your figure drawing. Um, but otherwise, I'm happy that you already had an improvement in your figure drawings. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe. If you also want to get mentored by me, make sure to check out my website, janoschmanesart.zone and apply for the mentorship. Otherwise, see you in the next video. Take care, ciao, ciao.